Perhaps you're new to doing day game or going out and practicing your street approaching, or maybe you've been doing it for a while, but you've still found that your anxiety is pretty high and you just have no idea what you can do to uh, take more control over it. Well, I want to give you what I had certainly adopted many years back, and that is introducing stoicism into my way of thinking. Now, stoicism has obviously been around for centuries. I mean, it came out when Marcus Aurelius and Epictetus were about back in the uh, the Roman era, and they were certainly the great philosophers of their time. And it's amazing how even after all these years, you know, through books that you can read about them and just the philosophies that they talked about, you can apply everything that they taught into modern day life. So I want to give you just three ideologies that I had certainly adopted that I think are ones that are also going to be really beneficial for you too. So the first one is that you have no idea how people are going to react to you and you can't control that. But what you can control is how you react to those situations. So for this instance, we're talking about how is someone going to react when you go over to stop them, to try and talk to them. And it's easy to remember, or in fact, actually, it's easy to forget that people have a lot of things going on in their lives and you've got to be somewhat sympathetic to it. You might be stopping someone who's having a really bad day. It could be their time of the month. They could be having problems with their boss, with friends, with family. They could be thinking about work. They could be thinking about studying. They might have like a list of jobs that they have to be doing and that's why they are running around like a headless chicken trying to complete them all whilst you coming over to very nicely give them a compliment and try and chat them up and uh, because of that you know you have no idea which any of those things it could be any of those things or it might not be any of those things but until you go over and talk to someone you don't actually know so there is no point stressing yourself out before you go and talk to them in thinking like oh this is going to go horribly oh I'm going to interrupt their day and stuff you just don't know. And I want you to just think about that and let it resonate that, you know what? There is no point stressing about something that is out of my control. What I can control is how I react to any one of those situations. What if she doesn't talk to me? What if she ignores me and she walks off? You can't let that bother you. You just need to be like, you know what? that is absolutely okay. I have probably caught someone on the wrong day at the wrong time and there is nothing wrong with that. That doesn't tell me that I'm a bad person. That doesn't tell me that she's not interested. It just means that there could be something more there that I just have no awareness over. Um, in fact, I remember many years ago I'd worked with a coach and he made a really good point about how uh, before he would go out and uh, do a approaching or before he would go and work with clients to then do demonstrations in front of them, he would do a lot of charity work. So he would buy like coffees and food and drinks and stuff for the homeless and then he would go out and give it to them. He'd go and give people compliments or in fact even as a part-time job as well, he was actually working in the charity sector helping people or uh, I think actually funny enough, I think it was actually the homeless as well. So he was helping people constantly and I remember him saying um, that if he went into, uh, if he went to go and stop a girl and she was just like, like, no, off, you know, and he would think, well, that doesn't mean that I'm a bad person. How can I be a bad person if I'm doing so much good for people? So no matter how you want to feel about the situation, no one wants to be rejected or turned down or ignored. But yeah, just remember, it's how you choose to react to the situation. React boldly and proudly that you did a really good thing. You attempted to do something that you've never done before, or maybe you've done before, um, but you've done something that doesn't mean that it reflects on you badly in any sort of way. Now, don't get me wrong, maybe you have 
uh, approached in the worst possible way as well. But that's that's a completely different story. But but point being is don't overwhelm yourself and stress yourself out when you are doing an approach. You can't control how other people react to you, but you can control how you react. So react in a really good way, stay calm and stay relaxed and you will be absolutely fine. So number two, you can't predict what will happen during the day, but you have to trust that you will be able to handle it. So I think a lot of guys also put too much emphasis on if they go out, it has to be a great session with practicing their social skills. And the reality is, is that you just have no idea who you're going to be meeting and who you're going to be stopping on the street or wherever. I have had... In fact, you know, this will be a really great story. So I've had it where many occasions where uh, dating coaches have booked me to do filming. And on sometimes, uh, on some occasions, they book me for eight hours and we have got absolutely no footage whatsoever. The choice of women hasn't been great. Um, the reactions haven't been great. They have, uh, uh, there's been days when the weather has turned awful. There's been days where just areas have been incredibly quiet and it's been empty and there's been absolutely nothing about and there has been nothing that they can do. And there's also been days where they've uh, booked me for two hours and they've been able to like ricochet from woman to woman to be able to get content for their YouTube channel. And then it's been really prosperous for their um, for their coaching business. So you can't really tell what a day is going to be like until you're actually out and about. You don't know how many approaches you're going to do. You don't know how many rejections you're going to get. And you don't know how many phone numbers or conversations or dates you're going to get either. And it, there is nothing wrong with not getting great results. Obviously, you want to get good results, but any time that you go out, you have to accept it is going to be a lottery of what your results can look like. And in fact, in a way, this is kind of why like, I don't like um, when people talk about statistics, when they say like, what's a good ratio of like girls to sleep with to, you know, number of approaches. It's very different to every single individual. And also it can depend on the, uh, the day, it can depend on the time, it can depend on the weather, it can also depend on someone's personal preference as well. The kind of women I'm attracted to might be very different to the kind of women that you're attracted to. So we're going to be very picky in the kind of women that we're going to be stopping and talking to. And again, there is nothing wrong with that. But with statistics, everyone is different. The only kind of statistics I would consider are ones where you are comparing someone who has been doing it for a really long time and they have developed their social skills. What kind of results are they getting as opposed to a beginner? That is the only comparison that you should be doing. And that's not even a comparison that you should be doing with other people. That is for your own journey. That is for you to compare how far you've come on your time developing your uh, your social skills in dating. Comparing yourself to a guy that could be either better looking than you or worse looking than you, who makes more money than you or less money than you, it isn't a fair contest. You can't do that and it's not right. And in fact, I've seen just that alone cause men anxiety because all they do is compare themselves to other people. And you can't. We are all on our own individual journeys and we all want our own things in dating. And that is, again, absolutely okay. You have to accept that. So when you're going out, when you're going to practice talking to women or if you're going out networking and whatever your reasons are, if you're looking to make friends or have relationships or sexual partners, just don't worry too much about how many women you have to talk to that day or, you know, what's a good ratio in this? Just go out and take every moment, one step at a time. Enjoy every interaction that you have and learn from it. 
absorb the knowledge that you're getting from it. And I can promise you, give it time, give it weeks or months or definitely even years, you will be in such an amazing place, way better than whatever level you are at now because consistency is certainly key. But don't stress yourself out by thinking you have to get great results when you are going out on any particular day. Just welcome whatever moments come with open arms and just accept it. If you go out for two hours and you find that you only met one woman, that's fine. That's fine. Don't waste though any more time walking around then for four or five hours and still finding that you're only talking to one woman or one woman. Sometimes a smaller amount of time is better. Just accept the moment. Accept how you're feeling as well. And there's no need to try and push for certain quotas if the experiences just aren't there. And my last point, point number three, is you can't know how any interaction that you have is going to go. But you do, though, need to be open to the opportunities and be willing to learn from every conversation that you have. So the problem that I find when guys just constantly copy what dating coaches say is that they aren't learning new things from the women that they're talking to. All they're thinking about is the script that the coach said, and they're not bringing in their own curiosity, their own questions into conversations that mean that they can learn something that then if they meet someone else from the same culture, same religion, same background or job, etc., they actually have more things and topics to talk about. They have more questions to ask that allows them to go deeper into conversations. So imagine then you've got someone who, what would be a a good, let's say you meet a girl on the street and she's from Brazil and you know absolutely nothing from Brazil and you ask her maybe like three things that you're really curious about. Maybe you ask like, what's uh, Rio de Janeiro like? What's it like being by Christ the Redeemer? Is it really as tall as they, uh, they say it is? What's the food like? I don't think I've ever tried Brazilian food. Is it spicy? Is it, you know, uh, is it sort of like just mostly meat? Is it salads? You know, You could ask these questions. There's nothing like bad about asking these rather than just trying to structure it in a way that maybe a coach has said. And what would that mean by getting answers to those particular questions? And bear in mind, it doesn't matter if you got a phone number from this Brazilian girl or not. It really doesn't matter. But what matters is what you've learned from that interaction, from that conversation with someone new and interesting, someone who's outside of your comfort zone. You might now know what it's like to be by Christ the Redeemer. You might now know a few things about Rio. You might also know a few things about the different foods and cuisines. So then what happens if you were to meet another Brazilian woman and she is from Rio or she works by Christ the Redeemer, or maybe she's uh, a nutritionist or a chef, you've now suddenly got things that you could talk about with another Brazilian person. And this applies to every kind of woman that you could meet. Wherever they're from in the world, whatever their jobs are, whatever their interests and hobbies are as well, be open to learning about other cultures and the more you can embrace that as well. I'm now I'm using the word embrace a lot in this video. I'm 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 aware of it. Uh, I won't put a counter, um, but you know the more you can end up um, being open to this knowledge and this wisdom, the better you will do in every conversation. So if you're someone who is very new at doing street approaching or new at doing day game, and you don't have much knowledge of much going on around the world, and I can assure you when I first started, I mean, I'm I'm just a Londoner through and through. I have even, even at my age now at 36, I've still hardly traveled the world. But when I get to meet new people from all around the world, my goodness, my curiosity goes through the roof. And I ask so much and learn so much from people that it doesn't even really matter 
too much if I don't have whatever kind of relationship with that person. Because I know the next person that I do meet, I'm going to have even more things to talk about. And I'm going to be able to take it to levels that I couldn't have taken it uh, from the previous conversations or prior ones. So be open to every conversation or interaction that you have. Embrace, again, uh, uh, embrace all of your conversations, learn from them, be open to learning new things. Don't stress yourself out if you don't know what to say or you don't know what to do. Ask genuine, curious questions and just think, it doesn't matter too much how this particular outcome or interaction goes, but what about the next one and the next one after that? You're also going to be developing your confidence from this as well. That is something else to bear in mind, that trust that if you're not confident now, after so many approaches, you will become even more confident. You will be even more used to social interactions. So just as a recap, and I I will uh, read them out this time around as well. So uh, stoicism point number one is that you can't control how people will react to you, but you can control how you will react. Stoicism number two, you can't predict what will happen during the day, but trust that you can handle it. And point number three of uh, stoicism You can't know how any interaction will go, but you can be open to opportunities and learning new things. So I highly recommend um, having a look at maybe some Stoicism books. I know Ryan Holiday is certainly quite a popular one to read. Um, Otherwise, um, uh, if you have a look at Marcus Aurelius or Epictetus, um, they are sort of really good good ones. I mean, everything's kind of based off of uh, books from them. yeah, in fact, I'm thinking actually, I I don't I don't think I read the books. I know I've read a couple of Ryan Holiday books, but uh, those are the ones certainly to turn to if you really want to go down the very philosophical route and just learn that you know there's no point stressing about the things that you can't control. Just worry about your own emotions and how you can control yourself, and you will certainly develop your resiliency to just all of the bad things that can stress you out in life. So if you can, please uh, like the video. I'd love to hear your comments below on your thoughts on this video. And if you have uh, also adopted any um, stoic philosophies into your life as well, I'd be curious to, to know if you actually do apply either any of these that I've gone through or maybe even some more. And if you can as well, do please subscribe to my channel. Um, I I need your help with reaching out to to more men. Uh, I genuinely want to be able to make a difference. I want more guys to have more amazing dating lives and um, and show them that their anxiety doesn't have to get the better of them and that they can get rid of it if uh, they work hard towards it. So like, subscribe, comment below. If you need me for coaching, read or check out my, uh, my links in the description below. And uh, I look forward to hearing from you, but otherwise look forward to uh, my next videos coming soon.